In the reign of the famous King Edward III, there was a little boy called Dick Whittington. Dick's mother and father had both died whilst he was very young, and as Dick was not old enough to work, he got very little to eat. The people in his village were poor, and they could only spare him the odd crust of bread. Now Dick had heard many tales about the great city of London, and about the streets that were paved with gold. So when a large wagon came by his village one day on its way to the great city, Dick asked the wagon driver if he could go with him. The man agreed, and they set off together. Dick arrived safely in London, and was in such a hurry to find the golden pavements that he ran off without even thanking the kind wagon driver. Dick ran until it was dark, but he found no gold on the streets. Poor Dick was almost starving, and he lay down to rest in the doorway of a Mr. Fitz Warren, a very rich merchant. He was soon seen by the cook, who was a very bad-tempered woman. "What are you doing here, boy? If you don't go away, I'm going to throw the dishwater on you." Just at that moment, Mr. Fitz Warren came home, and when he saw the dirty, ragged boy on his doorstep, he said, "Oh, poor fellow! Do get up. Let me help you." Dick had not eaten for three days and was so weak that the kind Mr. Fitz Warren ordered him to be taken into the house for some food, and he then gave him the job of helping the cook. Dick would have lived very happily in this family if it had not been for the bad-tempered cook. She used to say, "Look sharp, clean the pans, make the fires, and do all your work. Otherwise, you'll be in trouble." If this wasn't bad enough, in Dick's bedroom there were many holes in the floor, and every night he heard the scurrying of lots of rats and mice. Sometimes Dick would clean shoes to earn a little money, and one day he received a penny for his work and decided to buy a cat to catch the mice. Dick hid his cat and always took care to feed her, and in a short time he had no more trouble with the rats and mice. Soon after, Mr. Fitz Warren had a ship ready to sail, and it was the custom that all the servants sent something on the ship as a chance to bring good fortune. Dick said, "I have nothing but a cat which I bought for a penny some time since off a little girl." Then fetch your cat, my lad," said Mr. Fitz Warren, "and let her go." Dick went upstairs and brought down poor Puss. And with tears in his eyes, he gave her to the captain of the ship. The bad-tempered cook was very jealous of Dick. She began to treat him more cruelly than ever, and made fun of him for sending his cat to sea. Do you think your cat will sell for much money, or be of any use to you now? It will be dead by now, no doubt. Poor Dick couldn't bear it any longer. He left early one morning and walked for a long while. Eventually, he sat on a stone to rest. Suddenly, he heard the bells of Bow Church begin to ring, and they seemed to say to him, "Turn again, Whittington, thrice Lord Mayor of London." Lord Mayor of London, he said to himself, "I could put up with almost anything to be Lord Mayor of London when I grow up." So Dick changed his mind and returned to the house. We must now follow Miss Pussy Cat to the coast of Africa. The ship with a cat on board was a long time at sea, and was driven by the winds to a part of the Barbary coast. The people there came in great numbers to buy the fine things that the ship was loaded with. The king of this country sent for the captain and provided a great feast. They had not sat for long when lots of rats and mice rushed in and ate all the food. The captain was amazed and asked the king if he had any way of getting rid of these creatures. "Oh no," said the king, "but we would give half our treasure to be freed of them, for they not only eat our dinner but they run all over our beds at night." The captain remembered Dick Whittington's cat and offered to bring her ashore. "Oh, run, run," said the king. "I am impatient to see the dear creature." Away went the captain and brought Puss back under his arms. When the cat saw the rats and mice, she jumped out of his arms, and in a few minutes they had all scampered away in fright. The king was thrilled and bargained with the captain for Miss Pussycat and the whole ship's cargo. 
but the cat brought ten times as much as all the rest. The captain then said farewell to the king and set sail for England, and after a happy voyage arrived safe in London. Early one morning, Mr Fitzwarren had just arrived at his counting house when there was a knock at his door. Who's there? said Mr Fitzwarren. It's the captain of your ship, sir. Mr Fitzwarren opened the door to find the captain laden with precious jewels. The captain told the story of the cat and showed the rich presents that the king had sent for poor Dick. As soon as Mr Fitzwarren heard this, he called out to his servants. Go send him in and tell him of his fame and call him Dick Whittington by name. Dick entered the room and Mr Fitzwarren ordered a chair for him. My dear Mr Whittington, said Mr Fitzwarren, I rejoice in the news the captain has brought for you, for he has sold your cat to the King of Barbary and brought you in return more riches than I possess in the whole world, and I wish you may long enjoy them. Dick was far too kind-hearted to keep it all to himself, so he made a present to the captain and to all of Mr Fitzwarren's servants, even to the bad-tempered old cook. When Dick's face was washed, his hair curled, and he was dressed in his new suit of clothes, he was very handsome. Even Mr Fitzwarren's daughter now looked upon him as her sweetheart, and it wasn't long before they were married. History tells us that Mr Whittington and his lady lived in great splendour and were very happy. He was Sheriff of London, Lord Mayor on three occasions, and both he and his wife lived happily ever after.